it's the second level. It has an LOS pillar, and oh, if you press uh, Tiger Palm behind the LOS pillar, it yeah. like oh. wraps you around the Sorry. whole corner. I'm thing. Yep. All right, ads are over. Finally, calling this beautiful, beautiful man. All right, dude. First of all, man, I'm so glad to be able to talk to you again. Uh, had such a great conversation before the expansion, and I know multiple times. What's good about today is I have no time limit today. Oh boy. Yeah, so we can talk as long as we want. I know multiple times. We uh we kind of felt like we got cut off uh, because, you know, I had like some other stuff going on as I was talking to other people and you and I are both people that can just talk forever. So having yep. having a nice open slate is good. So I guess the first thing that I want to talk about, it's been a couple of months. We've gotten 10.0, 10.0.5, soon 10.0.7. Uh, interesting about most of those, there hasn't been many monk changes. Uh, but you, I think for the first time ever, are back playing your Windwalker. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I yeah, know. I switched uh, when pre-patch started. and then I've been playing the Druid a little bit in our alt raids, but yeah, I've been sticking pretty much with the Windwalker. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, I think I have Discord all the way up. That's just, that's as, that's as high as it's going to get, chat. All good. Tell me kind of what that's been like. I know we talked multiple times before the expansion about, you know, oh, this is so great. These talent trees can you know, give Windwalker so much more viability, you know, in Raid, especially because, like, in the past, like, all their stuff seemed to just be about Mythic Plus, and, like, Raid, they always had issues. You ended up being, like, the primary leader of the, like, monk community or playing another class, so you can... First of all, I think it sounded like you were a little bit over a lot of the bugs that the class had and trying to deal with, but also you you didn't really care about the AoE. You just want to, like, help you raid the most with boss damage and stuff like that. You're a very ethical DPS player. Um... How has that felt now? What has your experience been like playing Monk again for the first time? Um, you know, I, I definitely, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, obviously when, when you messaged me and said, asked me if I wanted to chat, you know, I've been thinking about it for a while. I, I definitely kind of stand by what I was saying. You know, I mean, my impressions, I think, were accurate at the time. You know, the tools are there. I mean, never before really has Windwalker had the tools that it has available to it right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think the one thing that, I didn't foresee and that maybe we all kind of undersold a little bit was the power of touch of death. Yeah. And, you know, maybe more specifically fatal flying guillotine, you know, it went from, you know, this kind of cool, like leveling with it, like was absolutely fantastic. It was a great, you know, tool to have in leveling. They, you know, you hit a button and five things disappear. You hit another button, five more things disappear. But I think now as time goes, has gone on, like I think we've seen that Windwalker is really, you know, there's a lot of power from the spec that is settled into touch of death and the four to five talents you take to maximize it. You know, so I, the tools are there. I definitely, you know, for even for single target, you know, Windwalker, the single target tools for Windwalker are absolutely there. Um, they are just so everything is just really in the shadow of touch of death. And it is kind of permeated everything. Yeah, I completely, completely agree. I think, I think most Windwalkers looked at this and thought that this was cool, as if it was a. Oh, this is before, like we kind of talked about it, because yeah, he, like he's saying, he did express some issue with it being so powerful and such a big part of your kit. That this is an excellent niche thing. What like in for a long time, I think people can probably remember doing dungeons. And just thinking like a high bolstered mob is like super scary and about to kill them. And then it just gets touch of death right before you die. Mm -hmm. Or a boss in Mythic Plus before the Brewmaster Monk Fort Brew that just dies from like 4% or 3% or something on a low key. Like that's something that you see and you're like, oh, touch of death exists. That's a button that someone has and is cool. And yep. monks, you've always felt like that's something you could do and was nice. Obviously, Legion touch of death like kind of deviated from that a bit. Interest uh, had some interesting concepts to it. But now we've had this version for a while. AoE touch of death is probably is an excellent idea if it's a niche thing you select to deal with a fight's unique profile to gain mm -hmm. some extra something from it. But where it stands now is it's pretty much the main source of power. And in any scenario where it's not your main damage, Windwalkers are tending to fall a bit behind. Uh, yeah. And I, I just think in general too, having one button you're pressing, especially with that many talents going into it, being that big a part of your breakdown just mm -hmm. is something especially going forward is just a gameplay style at least i i just want to let you kind of talk about that a bit and just how maybe some of the long-term ramifications of leaving that in yeah so i i think it, you know there's it's a multi kind of faceted thing you know they're they're really two two sides of it right you have fatal flying guillotine you know which really took the strength of 
touch of death and multiplied it by five, right? Pretty straightforward. You know, so what that really did was take any potential problems, any problems that had existed in the past and magnified them in that, you know, in that regard. And, you know, the main problem with that is just the damage that that touch of death can do. Um, you know, so what they did was multiplied it, you know, and and let it hit more targets. So, you know, that kind of exaggerated the problem of how strong it was or can be, I should say. Um, and then you have having the double touch of death, you know, coming from forbidden techniques that really kind of a doubles, you know, any other potential problems, um, you know, having to use it twice. But really what it does is it takes the actual mechanical problem with touch of death and makes it happen twice as often. And by mechanical problems, you know, I mean that like anyone it not activating. That, yeah. A lot of people probably maybe don't even notice it, you know, but when you're really trying to squeeze it in, in the moment, and, and certainly now, you know, that we're, that it's happening twice as often, you know, more and more people are noticing it. This has a problem, been a problem that has existed for years. Um, it was just always, you know, all right, whatever. I'm going to use touch of death anyway at the end of the fight. You know, bing, bong, boom. You know, not a big deal. I can live with this delay. You know, now because touch of death is such an integral part of our AOE and Mythic Plus, And, you know, um, you know, we're, for example, right now we're, we're progressing Diurna. Going from Dathia to Broodkeeper, you know, if you want fights that are really going to exaggerate, you know, the problems with touch of death, those are two fights that, you know, that's going to be the, you know, to do it. Like in Daffy, you have such a small window and you got a bunch of other people AOEing, you know, to where, all right, you're like, you got to get up there. You got to get your, um, I made a list of, of all the things you have to do as, as we started doing Daffy and, you know, it really kind of grinded against me, you know, you got to get up on the platform, right? You're going to put down your statue because, you know, it's 2 to 3% damage, you might as well. Ideally, you get Fist of Fury out, you know, for the tier debuff. Functionally, you should do it on the target beforehand, before you get knocked up. The buff lasts that long, um, right? But you got to get the Fist debuff up, the tier debuff up. You want to get Mark of the Crane up. You want to get Strike of the Windlord out so you can start ticking uh, Thunder Fist damage. Um, you know, you're going to, you want to tab around for Skyreach. You got to have enough Chi while doing all of that. And then you know, you're going to start spinning crane kicking, right? And then while you're doing that, you are looking around your screen for, all right, what's the first target that hits 15% so I can target it and hit touch of death? Okay, that happens. Now I got to hit something in between. Oh, and now I have to find another target because that target's probably dead and do, you know, do it all, all over again. So that delay on a fight like Dathia, because the window is so small, that delay feels crippling. Um, you know, and you have to, to the point where you basically have to stop doing whatever what you're, you're doing, doing and spam and, 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 yeah. and that the, I just think it's such a weird class design thing to where if you're trying to get it and it's good damage too, it's not pad damage. It's really, really right. good AOE damage on Broodkeeper to have touch of deaths hitting the bigger mobs by touch of deathing <laughs> off of the mages and stuff. So like you are you're sitting there having spamming an ability that's like not even popping up as usable yet for sometimes an entire global, maybe more. And it's still the proper thing to do, which is like AFK and just spam something. And it's very strange. And I guess the continued problem is that that, that problem to use Dathy or, or Diurna as an example, that problem's not going to get better as time goes on. That problem's going to get worse, right? As people get more gears, people get more comfort with the fights. You know, if you're doing lower, you know, honestly, lower content, but heroic or, you know, if, you're, if your raid is out gearing a boss, if you're in a Mythic Plus that is you know, below your skill and gear level, like that problem becomes magnified because you can switch to a target and in the time it takes touch of death to activate, you could be sitting there spamming that button, you know, breaking your mouse, spamming it as fast as you can. And that target can die before you get touch of death off because of that delay, um, you know, and really, and again, like that problem existed before. This has been a problem we've had, you know, for years, you know, since they changed touch of death away from the, you know, eight second explosion. But this now, not only does it happen twice as often, but the potential damage loss is five times as big. Because now if you miss a touch of death, right, if, if the Dathia ads die before you get the second one off, then yes, all right, they died. That's good for the raid, you know, but you're, you're left missing out on, you know, a million damage you know, depending on your health and, and the targets and, 
you know, whether you have Fort Brew and stuff up. So, uh, you know, the functional aspect of it, you know, really kind of comes from forbidden technique and having to use touch of death twice. If you only had to use it once, then you would do that. You would pause, you'd miss out on one spinning or you, you know, you try to time your spinning crane kick so that you're still spinning um, while you use touch of death, Mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. But if it only happened once, I mean, that's, that's half as often. That is, you know, the way it used to be, it's livable, you know, all right, I can get it off once. It's that second time that really makes it super disruptive. Yeah. And the hit combo implications of that as well. Right. Cause you can't just, you know, ideally, you know, you're not just going to sit and spam touch of death and then get it off back to back because then you just lost damage. You know, you've dropped hit combo, you've dropped mastery. It's very disruptive. And I think, you know, because there's so much damage in it. Windwalker right now, and, and I was th- I've was i been thinking about this a lot, um, you know, for anyone who does or doesn't know, like we have Deswind in my guild, right? Deswind's pretty well-known Mythic Plus uh, warrior, and now he does um, Unholy. And Deswind's an absolutely spectacular player. Windwalker and Unholy Death Knight are about as opposite as possible. Yes, good, very good take. I mean, you and I have talked about this, and, and you mentioned, like, my preference, I like single target damage. You know, I don't know how... I've been playing Windwalker for this long with my preference for single target damage, but Unholy is in a spot where you look at your Unholy Death Knight and say, yeah, you know, you need PI, but we're, you know, you're going to have a priest at some point. Um, You know, we'll get you a priest, Um, you know, but all right, you do your boss damage so well that don't worry about anything else that's going on in a fight, right? You just focus on the boss. We'll take care of everything else. And they can do that. Windwalker on the flip side, our single target is so spectacularly poor and our, that burst AOE, I don't, I don't even want to say our AOE, Windwalker AOE is just kind of okay. If you look at a fight like Primal Council, where you're only going to get touch of death off twice, Windwalker AOE, sustained AOE over the course of that fight is actually pretty poor. You know, mm-hmm. it's in the lower third, you know, but Windwalker's in the, at that point where we're so good at that burst AOE that you know, you're going to say to your Windwalker, all right, don't worry about blowing your cooldowns on the boss because, you know, that's not going to do very much. You save your cooldowns. You do whatever you can to kill these ads. And that's great. It's super useful. There's a lot of fights right now that that is an essential tool that you can just say, all right, when, you know, think of like Soul Render was even a more exaggerated situation. No, I mean, um, just any, anything like that. A fight like you, you, the last two bosses you did are Dathia into mm-hmm. Broodkeeper. Coop, Brood Keeper. Two fundamentally awesome fights for Windwalker. Mm-hmm. E- even though, like, your Tiger doesn't line up perfectly on Dathia, anytime you have to kill something on a hard, any kind of hard content, obviously Mythic Plus is this all the time, especially on Fortified, where you're going into an ad pack that needs to die, Windwalker has been and is now and probably will be one of the top, like, three or four classes at exactly that for a long time. Yeah. And, and, it, and it really, yeah, I mean, it really is just spectacular at that. Um, you know, like, don't get me wrong. I, you know, I'm going to complain, you know, about the state of Windwalker right now. Don't get me wrong. If you're somebody that does Mythic Plus, right? I've done probably more Mythic Plus than maybe ever before in my life. Because Mythic Plus, Windwalker is a lot of fun. Yeah, I love it. You know, it really fits what Windwalker is good at. You know, the being able to switch between Serenity on Tyrannical and Storm Earth and Fire. Like, the, you know, uh, there's Windwalker and Mythic Plus is in a really good spot because Mythic Plus is perfectly or windwalker is perfectly designed for mythic plus when you're when you can tell your windwalker all right but don't worry about the boss damage we'll worry about the boss damage you worry about you know the ads that's great it's great to be useful the problem is you're useful for maybe 10 percent of the fight mm-hmm. you know if you're on dathia and you're you know it's your job to annihilate those ads if you're on um senarth right and you're gonna save your serenity and just go to town on the big spider when it comes down you know, you're going to do great at your job, but your job only exists for 10, 20 percent of the fight. Mm-hmm. If you're an unholy death knight and they're telling you, right, don't worry about anything else. You focus on the boss. That boss is there the whole time. You know, that that boss damage matters the whole time. Um, and I think that really kind of is what irks me about this niche that Windwalker continues to be pushed in. Windwalker is like really good at this niche. You know, but when I look at the damage meters, when I look at the numbers, I mean, you know, you and I have talked about this over the years. Like I, I take data constantly. You know, I took data again on Monday for, you know, after some of the buffs and stuff, um, you know, historical data. I've got seven, eight years, you know, worth of data for rating. 
you know, Wind Walker right now and, and is continuing to really focus this. And if you're somebody that enjoys that niche, if you're somebody that enjoys Mythic Plus, that niche kind of transfers from that aspect of rating into Mythic Plus. Um, but Wind Walker really, you know, you know, when you look at, a, you know, boss damage, when you look at, for example, Unholy Death Knights right now, mm -hmm. their boss damage is really strong and their boss damage is so strong that their overall damage still is good. Right. And they can also then swap to, you know, a more AOE focused build and, and get by and do well on a fight like Council. Mm -hmm. Windwalkers don't have that option. You know, we either do burst AOE or we do nothing. Well, I think, you know, I actually want to cut in here. I think a prime issue with this, and we actually talked about this before the expansion as a concept with talent trees to be able to fix the issue with Windwalker is, hey, you could have never buffed their single target before because their AOE was so strong that they would just be the best class in all of PvE for everything. And there was some validity to that, even though there were certain cases where their single target was way too low. But this should theoretically be that. You bring up Unholy DK. Unholy DK swaps, I believe, actually less. Um, so Windwalker has a different issue than Unholy, where like Windwalker can do all of its AOE with like a build that's less than a single target build, but like you lose very little single target to actually do this, so it's just so worth it. Unholy has the opposite problem, where if they can go full single target or full AOE, and both of them in the right scenario are potentially some of the best in the game at exactly those things, but there's no middle ground. Windwalker has the middle ground, but they don't have the option to select it. I'll give an example. Unholy changes less talents to go from their optimal AOE build to their optimal single target build than Windwalker does. Windwalker changes about eight talents, I think, to go from like Touch of Death AOE to Serenity single target going down the Feyline route. Eight mm -hmm. talents change. And how much single target do you gain from those eight talents? Not much. Less than 5%, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, it really... Yeah, I mean that's that's a that's difference. insane. When I go through and, and look at you know that stuff as I, you know, if we're coming to a new boss and I'm looking at right, what talents of other people used here, you know, you'll see people in what would pass as a almost full AOE build, you know, parsing in the top ten, top five for Windwalker and a fight like Taros, you know, because whatever they forgot to swap their talents, you know, what you know, or they just were you know couldn't be asked to do it. There's a lot of of that stuff and and that's where i think it really irks me because those tools are there right the aspect of being able to swap and be all right right now i'm gonna re do really good aoe or right now i'm gonna do really good single target is is good i think the talent system for a lot of classes is designed well for that windwalkers unfortunately have to choose between doing spectacular aoe and spectacularly bad single target you know, and, and I think the, the delta between them, that gap is so big that it, it you know, it just is puzzling. Well, you know, it's I, just I strange too. because I actually wonder what, what classes would prefer. What classes would prefer the Frost DK, Demon Hunter, a few other classes in the game problem where they don't really change their talents. So there's not really right. a lot of choice, but you're good at everything all the time. You may not be the best in the game at any of them, particularly with those two, but you're an enhanced shaman. You just so much value with very few talent changes and you can kind of do it all. Would you rather have that or have what the Windwalker tree is supposed to be, what the Unholy DK tree is supposed to be, where you actually have the ability to hyper-specialize into a damage type based on what you need, but the penalty for doing other parts of it, most just for reference, most hard content in this game, mythic end bosses, second to last bosses outside of Rigalon, uh, mm. the all mythic plus involves both heavily. Mythic plus, Windwalkers are insane in mythic plus right now. You're seeing at the high end, they're just being edged, even as good as they are, they're being edged out by classes that are just going to do a little bit better uh, on mm. bosses while doing similar ad things. And a lot of that is talent tree stuff. Which one would you I actually want to ask you that? Which one would you rather have as a player? I mean, I personally would rather be able to choose and specialize. This is a, a you know a question that I asked on Twitter, um, you know, about a year and a half ago, and you know, got over three hundred you know uh, votes and stuff like that. And I asked, you know, would would you prefer your class or spec be the best at single target and the worst at AOE? The best AOE and the worst at single target or perfectly average at both, right? So would you rather be able to specialize 
um, in one or or average of both. And the majority of people, 46.6% said perfectly average of both. The second best choice at just shy of 32% was best at single target, worst at AOE. You know, which uh, my intuition was that it would have been the opposite, just given, you know, how much, especially since obviously most of the people who follow me on Twitter are going to be Windwalkers and Windwalkers are historically an AOE focused spec. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I like the talent designs that a lot of specs have for that reason. You know, I like that some classes can be that kind of jack of all trades because I think there's absolutely people out there that would like that. Me personally would rather, you know, I'd like to rather be able to specialize because I'd like to be able to say, all right, today, you know, if we're doing farm, all right, today, I don't really, you know, I'm going to let other people, you know, they can have their pad, they can have their big numbers. I'm going to worry about boss damage today. You know, so I'm going to, I'm going to talent into boss damage and I'm, you know, I'll let them do that or vice versa the next week. All right. Last week I focused on boss damage this week. I'm going to focus on overall. I want to go, you know, get my parses as high as I can for in that aspect of things. I like that aspect of things, not just kind of, you know, all right, this is, this is the way things are. And, you know, and just kind of accepting. And I, I think it, it's also more theoretically should be less volatile you know, Windwalker, like you said, has been in that situation where, you know, the, the tools were so meshed mm -hmm. that you can't buff, you know, you can't nerf AOE without nerfing single target and Windwalker not having, mm -hmm. you know, single target to be nerfed. So I think when you, when you do that, when there's not a lot of swapping, I think it makes it more difficult for tuning to happen and for classes to be viable in both aspects of things. Um, you know, whereas Windwalker now has the tools to differentiate between aoe and single target um you know some of the tools could get better they could you know we could have better tools okay um you know especially like that last row of yeah we're going to talk about that so so right now i kind of just want to go through we can talk about a lot of the issues the just kind of the, a lot of this is core fundamental like stuff for all classes concepts mm -hmm. that we're talking about right now and then I kind of want to talk into a few problem abilities. Obviously, we've started out hard with Touch of Death today. That pretty much had to be addressed immediately. But then we're also going to talk about just kind of... There's a lot of good, a lot of really awesome new good things added in the expansion. Mm -hmm. And then also still some things that, you know, just interesting conversation. We'll probably get more into like individual stuff later. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, I think Touch of Death really... Ha that's the thing you have to talk about first because that is the shadow in which Windwalker lives right now. Uh, let's actually start with Whirling Dragon Punch. I think this is a this is a button that I coming into this expansion, I think I said like before beta, like before monks were released, I was like I really hope they don't make Whirling Dragon Punch a capstone level talent. It just feels like a button that is as core to Windwalker as Rising Sun Kick and Fist of Fury. It's just part of the class, uh, and and then obviously it's been here ever since. Uh, it has famously not really been selected much or at all. In Dragonflight so far, I will say though, I have definitely changed my tune on that. I love this ability. Yeah. I love playing with it. Obviously, there are some downsides of the animation, uh, but the animation can also be good in some scenarios if used properly. I think Whirling Dragon Punch has been directly replaced by Zwen's Battle Gear as far as like where it stands in your rotation, mm -hmm. and I don't miss having it. I don't. I wouldn't yeah. mind if I had it, but I think Zwen's Battle Gear is so good now that it's not just locked behind the power of Invoker's Delight like it was last expansion mm -hmm. that. This has just been an excellent addition, and I've surprisingly not uh, felt bad about the loss of this spell. Yep. No, and that's and that's exactly how I feel. Coming after so many years of Whirling Dragon Punch, you know, really being the only option, whether it's because it's strong or because Serenity was a mess. You know, life without Whirling Dragon Punch for a lot of Windwalkers was unfathomable. You know, it was such a essential aspect of how the spec played for so long. And yeah, I mean, I'm in this situation where I don't miss it. I like it. I hate the, you know, the animation locking, the movement locking, blah, blah, blah. But I, and I think, you know, I think you're right. I think Zuen's, between Zuen's Battle Gear and Strike of the Windlord, I think those really kind of fill mm -hmm. that role. Um, you know, a lot of people were concerned about not having Whirling Dragon Punch and the spec being a little bit slower, um, you know, having ascension and power strikes mm -hmm. certainly have sped the spec up uh you know quite a bit serenity being a, a viable option you know have have helped to kind of fill that gap um but then even just for the button presses you know i think you're right i think zuen's battle gear and strike of the windlord have really kind of 
filled that spot, that hole that people were expecting to have, you know, in their hearts with Whirling Dragon Punch being gone. Yeah, not even just uh, gameplay either, but one of the things that Whirling was so good is after you got all of your damage off, it was a reliable source of, like, continued AoE damage throughout a pull. Right. And that is also replaced with the with Thunderfist, right? It's like Thunderfist yep. being under Strike of the Windlord. This is just something that's just kind of pumping the whole pull and gives well, you I, that. What? Yeah, I would say for, for single target, for sure. I, I think for AoE, it's the damage of it has been more replaced by Shadow Box and Treads. Oh, yeah, good point. The fact that Combined with teachings, kick, yeah. Yeah, I think, bla right, Blackout Kick with teachings and shadow boxing tread, I think has become such a fabulous button to have, you know, in a lot of ways that we've never really had, you know, blackout kick really was always just kind of that extra thing, you know, even going way back to when it had a dot, you know, um, that would heal you or damage, you know, or, uh, damage your target, you know, way back when. So I think it, it's damage, you know, between with a little bit of strike of the windlord because strike of the windlord is obviously, a, you know, mostly single target, but the shadow boxing treads and teachings the monastery that really kind of fits that that role of continual uh you know that sustained aoe damage you know that windwalker should have um but again is you know we can't have it because we can't have really strong sustained aoe and insane burst with touch of death mm -hmm. you know and touch of death is is again that's that shadow for you know for that very situation Okay, I kind of want to talk about some stuff up here, but I just want to talk about the Covenant abilities that were brought back. Mm -hmm. I think there was a lot of uh, anti-Bone Dust Brew uh, sentiment coming from the community, at least from what I could see. Uh, you see a lot more than me. Um, and it was mainly surrounding just kind of the gameplay around it. There was something yeah. you could do like with a little bit of intricacy. You did the whole setup. You did the spinning crane kick into rising sun kick. Spinning kick. You, got, you, you didn't ignore your mastery for the entire Bone Dust Brew, but still the, the emphasis on spamming spinning, especially when you got extra procs of this mm -hmm. after the initial burst was just something where people wanted to see it go. I will say as well, I have changed my tune on bone dust. I think a lot of initial like theory crafting and talent tree stuff at the beginning of this expansion had more fury of Zwen play and mm -hmm. bone dust wasn't really being considered as much, but I do really like playing with this spell now, now that it is not as degenerate as far as the gameplay that it goes with. However, I will say, I want you to kind of riff on it a bit, but mm -hmm. I do think it does upset the natural cooldown flow of Windwalker, where something that's mm -hmm. cool about Windwalker is you do have a very powerful two-minute, but uh, Storm, Earth, and Fire, one of the most unique spells in the game, uh, if you're playing that, you can kind of CD whenever you want, unless you're playing Bone Nose Brew, right? Because right. if you're playing Bone Nose Brew, you're not really using that extra charge of clothes where you want. You're using it exactly with Bone Dust because it would be stupid not to, and you feel much more locked into your cooldown cycle. I think that's like a downside to it and the fact that both of the nodes that are supposed to empower it are uh, pretty weak, right? Useless. So Yeah, useless. <laughs> uh, so so something, yeah, just uh, how do you feel about them bringing back Bone Dust specifically, and we'll get into Feyline after. Um, yeah, so I had a lot of reservations about Bone Dust. You know, Bone Dust Brew was a big aspect of what, you know, of kind of doubling down on what I disliked about Windwalker, you know, which is just that full bore, uh, you know, AOE, blasting nothing else matters situation i think you know some of this is because of the loss of calculated strikes right so um spinning crane kick does a little bit less damage but mm -hmm. for the most part really this is it's balanced by hit combo you know and and is insane as it sounds for me to say this out loud hit combo is kind of the hero of the talent tree in a lot of ways wow you know i still <laughs> what have all okay. right yeah. i still have all my problems with hit combo and that feel like, you know, the fact that I feel like it is a punishment for mistakes, not a reward for positive play, you know, that has never changed. However, hit combo kind of helps to hide or, or lessen some of that potential for things. True. You know, without hit combo, we would pop bone dust brew and we would, you'd spin your yeah. face off. Yeah. Um, you know, but you don't do that because of hit combo. And there, you know, the problem is there are still, there is a theoretical point where, you know, you will then untalent hit combo. Um, but because, you know, spiritual focus and meridian strikes are not talents you're going to take a lot, mm -hmm. hit combo is the easiest path to get teachings in the monastery, which you're going to take all the time because it's awesome mm -hmm. in single target and, a, you know, AOE and everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so hit combo, you know, kind of just by the nature, if nothing else, the fact that it gets you to teachings in the monastery in one point, you know, instead of two. 
you know, its value is there. So then, all right, you're going to want to keep the buff up. You're going to want to keep um, your mastery going. So then that puts kind of the limiter on bone dust brew, you know, and there are things like if spinning crane kick gets buffed too much, then, you know, you can, you know, there'll be that point where you're like, all right, well, to hell with hit combo. I'll either untalent or I'll just ignore it during this buff time and I'll spin like wild anyway. Mm -hmm. um we there is some space before we get to that point mathematically um but not as much as i think would be nice Um, but hit combo has kind of helped to alleviate some of that concern and because of that it also then the flip side of that is it makes hit combo feel a little bit more natural because there's really not a situation where you'd want to break hit combo you know kind of naturally um and that again circles back to touch of death with forbidden techniques and using two touch of deaths back to back, um, you know, and, and stuff like that to the point where that is a situation where you might want to break hit combo and say, I need this damage now and it's okay to lose damage uh, later. But yeah, hit, hit combo. Yeah. I, as, as much as it really does sound wild after so many years of me complaining about it, and I still do complain about it. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it does really kind of help, to connect a lot of the aspects of the class tree and the class itself right now uh, because it's strong enough that you'll always take it you know and it kind of keeps the other things in check so we kind of yeah kind of went over that we'll get to skyreach in a bit we will get to emperor's capacitor in a bit we'll get to invokers in a bit at the beginning of this expansion when they released these talent trees i think it was in the initial incarnation of this they had feline stomp i think eventually they added a better node after it um or buff that in some way this has been something that's used in some single target builds right now it has some issues where it doesn't hit certain bosses but mm-hmm. it it uh a lot of people wanted to see weapons of order come back here uh especially with invoker's delight uh being the thing that kind of enabled weapons of order to be as good as it was mm-hmm. Uh, and we weren't sure if we were getting that back either. Serenity and Weapons of Order kind of are anti-synergistic a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. So that would be kind of weird. And that's currently like what you play with this build. But I just kind of want you to talk about their decision to bring this back. Do you like that it's an option? Uh, just anything about this spell. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Feyline Stomp in itself is a relatively lackluster but right now. Right. You're never going to talent into Feyline Stomp and not talent into Feyline Harmony. You know, uh, mm-hmm. Feyline Stomp is the vehicle for which you get 8% more damage, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from, from Feyline Harmony. Um, you know, since they, it, there was, you know, a little bit of, of tuning of things. Um, you know, there was a period of time last week where you could spec Mist Weaver talent into some Feyline Stomp talents, use Feyline Stomp, stand on it, switch back to Windwalker, and keep the Mist Weaver buffs. And that felt fantastic. But, Obviously unintended, it was fake. But yeah, so Feyline Stomp is really kind of uh, the vehicle, you know, for that Feyline Harmony. Um, I personally really like it. Like I, you know, I talked about how I really enjoyed Mythic Plus this expansion more than maybe ever. But really, I think what I enjoy most is that Serenity, you know, that burst. That I enjoy the single target um, okay. rotation, you know, that single target play style. And not just because I like single target damage more. Um, I, I like the flow. I think Serenity with Zuen's Battle Gear, with Invoker's Delight, if you have Bloodlust at the same time, I think there's just such a great flow. I think um, there's a great flow in that. I notice mm-hmm. a lot of gameplay deficiency with Serenity outside of that. On Serenity is where I re- the only reason I do not like Serenity, it is awesome with everything up. I have such an issue with it not only for its cooldown lineups, like one and a half minute Storm Earth and Fire makes perfect sense because of the charge system. One and a half mm-hmm. minute on Windwalker just feels a little strange, even while good to use most of the time on that CD. That to me feels, it feels so slow for what you're giving up to get it. Yeah, and, and, I, and I agree. And I think in that situation, I think Feyline Stomp and, you know, Feyline Harmony helps to kind of fill some of that downtime mm-hmm. a bit. You know, obviously not as much. I am someone that has gone on record for years and saying I like I liked the more downtime focused, you know, Windwalker specs of the past. Um, you know, but I agree because when you play with Serenity and you don't have Zuan up, you know, maybe used it for a different time or you don't have, uh, you know, so then you don't get Invokers or you don't have 
bloodlust, it feels very awkward. Where you're like, all right, you know, when you're when you've got all the things, it's smooth, it's great, you are pumping out rising sun kicks. And when you don't, you're kind of struggling to fill the time. Mm -hmm. Um, So I 100 percent, you know, agree with you there. You know, I've definitely been impressed with the feeling of Feyline Stomp and and the reset uh, frequency um, in order to kind of fill some of those gaps, to fill that time uh, in between. Because, like, you know, for example, last night when we were re-clearing, um, you know, I had a moment and Feyline Harmony was still up on, I think it was, let's say Aranog, whatever. Feyline Harmony was still on Aranog because I was focused on single target because to heck with doing AoE on that fight. Yeah. And um, yeah, speaking of touch of death earlier, if right, you guys play exactly. a Windwalker monk and you have tried to get a good touch of death oh. on Aranog with any good DPS in your guild, you know oh, that my. feeling. It's it's probably the biggest incarnation of that feeling. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, yeah, so like, but there was a moment that I had a free global. Nothing was going to be up this second. And even though you know Aranog had Feyline Harmony up, Feyline Stomp was had reset itself. So I just used it then. And you know, like, so I think there's a lot of they're not a lot of that stuff, but it happens enough that, you know, every once in a while I kind of catch myself going, oh, this is this is nice. It filled in that hole, um, you know, that otherwise would have happened. So I would like to see, you know, if we're going to not only say be stuck using it, but if it's going to be the best choice in single target, I would like to see, you know, some of those wind, uh, the Mistweaver talents, you know, come and replace, mm-hmm. you know, not Feyline Harmony, but replace Way of the Fey, you know, whether it's Ancient Concordance, to give you even more blackout kicks, which then give you more rising sun kicks, you know, all that stuff. It also gives you a buff that lets you know you're standing on your Feyline Stomp, which would be fantastic. And the improvements that got made with having it curl and stuff like that was was very nice visually because it's a beautiful ability. Um, you know, or awaken Feylines, you know, to get those resets more often. Mm-hmm. Makes it way more, it was way more functional ability and so yeah. so much less one-dimensional, yeah. Yeah, and I think if we had one of those, either of those, we would then talent into that extra spot you know where we never take way of the fate now but we would probably put a point into one of those two talents in single target so yeah so i i fail stomp for me is one of those situations where i think it's good but it could be better yeah i agree i wonder if we want to get to the absolute banger next uh <laughs> let's well, do it. i i have i i do raid at five your time so I've got 45 minutes. Oh, we so, are going to be cut short. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, we'll speed it up a little bit. I mean, it will have been an hour and a half of talking. So yeah, well, that's, really that is nothing. <laughs> uh, no, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know you We've know. We've done longer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about Skyreach. I love this spell. I, I think mm-hmm. this has added so much to Windwalker. The feeling, just the feeling of your opener burst on any singular mob, the intricacy of not having clones up later on some fights, and being able to tab target a lot of value into that crit uh, with your mm-hmm. Tiger Palms is is so great. My main issue with this, well, okay, obviously I'm not like a, you know, I'm not super smart for bringing up that the 10 yard range uh, charge can be problematic. Like that's mm-hmm. obvious. However, when I started this expansion, I was like, man, this is just like the raging blow thing. Get it away from me. Mm-hmm. The more I play with it, the more I actually do like having the option that the charge is there. Uh, it's great. I'm on Mythic Razageth right now. Just killed Broodkeeper last night with our second guild. Like, I can see the value of Skyreach. There are a lot of situations where the charge is actually nice. And I bet if they were to make a choice node for it, uh, that I bet a lot of people would still choose to have the charge in a lot of situations. As good as the design is in general and potentially the choice for the charge, I think that the the charge has caused a lot of problems. And it's even led to people, I feel like, having bad accountability. Because, like, it's this late to the expansion. A lot of people have gotten better at Skyreach. But still, you know, there's a lot of people who die and immediately point out this ability when, you know, you can, you can outplay a lot of deaths with Skyreach by just being more aware of it. That being said, I think there's an ability in the Mistweaver tree that is a great thing to look at for this. It's almost, it's a completely different thing. It's a healing cooldown instead of something you press every other global, but it has the exact same function as what a choice node of Skyreach could be. Revival and the Dispel element. The Dispel Mm. element of Revival could be very much seen like the charge element of Skyreach, something that in a scenario is very, very good and extremely powerful and nice to have, but there's also a scenario where it actually makes the talent or button feel much worse because that part of it exists, whether it's how much you're thinking about it or in some raid bosses it's literally wiped to you. Obviously, the stakes are a little bigger, 
But all they did was simply just add a choice node. doesn't hurt anything, and it allows you to remove that part of it. I think that would be an excellent thing for Skyreach, because while I think I would choose to play with the charge a lot more than maybe a lot of other people would, there are certainly fights where maybe you're not dying to Skyreach, but it's so potentially dangerous that it occupies enough of your thoughts to where you might have just, you're just losing awareness in other parts of your kit because you're just so focused on your positioning. So I don't know. I just kind of want to hear you talk about it. It's obviously an extremely divisive ability, um, but I think the upside of this ability is incredible and I would not want them to outright remove it. Yeah, so I, it it is one that I was very nervous about, but it is one that very quickly grow grew on me. Um, you know, there are definitely times if you've played a Windwalker with Skyreach and you have not yeeted yourself off the, the cliff on Sinarth, you know, especially I think the second or the third plat, the it's, third it's, level has it's, a, it's the, a little... It's the second level. It has an LOS pillar. And if you press Tiger Palm behind the LOS pillar, it yeah. like wraps you around the whole corner thing. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, I mean, and there's a, there's the aspect of that where it kind of shocks your system because you, you go bananas on your screen, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you have a good laugh. But I, I think I think to your point, you know, you're, you're definitely right. You know, and it's something that we said, go, you know, going in that, yes, yeah, Skyreach, you know, I'll be the first to tell you, I am not particularly good at managing the crit buff aspect of things. You know, that's something that I, I'm assuming probably PVPers. And people with a lot more experience with Mythic Plus are probably a lot better at with me. I tend to just not worry about that. You know, um, I only have so much brain RAM, and that is not something that generally fits um, on my processes. But um, the charge aspect of it, it's something that I really found I got used to a lot faster than I expected to. Um, some of that, I think, is having played Feral Druid you know, through the end of, of Shadowlands because Feral Druid has that charge that you're going to want to zip in there, you know, and I got very used to zipping in there a lot and, and having my character kind of move itself, which which Skyreach does. Um, so I think that helped me a little bit. Um, but there are definitely times on like a Dathia where, you know, or a Razageth, whatever, when you're getting knocked back and you use it and it, cancels the knockback right it zips you in you time mm -hmm. and you feel like you're just a genius yeah it's sick you know so i i do i think i think to you know again to your point i think if if you die to skyreach i have died to skyreach you know i knew i was going to die to skyreach i thought i was going to be done with this talent a long time ago um, but if you die to skyreach it's really because you pressed it when you weren't supposed to you know the talent did what it was supposed to do you're the one that utilized it in the wrong time mm -hmm. You know, so there are times where I've gotten used to it because saying, okay, I can't press Tiger Palm here. And that's really a problem, you know, because Tiger Palm is our only. Yeah, it's it also that's rare. It is rare, you know, but yeah. it, but when it happens, you remember it. Like, I, I'm just like thinking right back. I played like Mythic Plus like last Saturday for most of the day or Monday or something. And I remember there was like two times where there was just a mob, a bunch of mobs with a bunch of frontals, and I just sat there like, I am just, I just can't really do anything right now. And it, mm -hmm. it's, it's rare, but it does happen, and that feeling is bad. Yeah, I think frontals, are, and, and you know, I think I think you mentioned this earlier, right, was I was tuning in before we started talking, but Hall of Valor, you know, is just a death trap with Skyreach in a lot of, you know, situations. Um, there's so many, you know, in any situation where there's a lot of cleaving, you know, I, I did a Court of Stars yesterday and the um, Felguard mini boss that does its little stomp. Like I zipped in and I was I thought I was at a 90 degree angle from the front, but the game disagreed mm -hmm. and Skyreach put me there and and, you know, he stomped me. And that was a situation where, you know, I should have played more defensively and I got a little overzealous, you know, with it. But. There are definitely those times, and like you said, you notice those times. And because those times then come with not being able to tiger palm, they then build on each other, right? Okay, well, I, I can't tiger palm now. Oh, well, now I can't use rising sun kick because I couldn't tiger palm back then. You know, do I use a blackout kick right now just to have some damage? You know, and it just kind of it snowballs a little bit. You know, so I think I think it's it's one of those things, those really, that negativity bias kind of comes out with Skyreach a lot. You really notice it when it's a problem. Um, you know, and I think the simple, you know, I say simple, you know, but I don't, I know nothing about coding. Um, you know, I think the simple change is for it to just work a little bit more consistently, like some of the other abilities we have, you know, like a Feral Lunge, I think it's called Feral Lunge, Feral Leap. 
um, you know, like a fell blade, whatever demon hunters have, you know, to where it works a little bit consistently. I mm-hmm. think right now it sucks you a little too far into the hitbox. boss's hitbox. Yeah. You know, where you're already, you're still in melee range, so why should it zip you forward? Yeah, yeah, that that um, that I completely agree. It should that would actually fix so much that if you were ever yeah. within melee, if you're ever within melee range of the boss, it just doesn't charge you at all. But if yeah, you are if ever it, out, it does. Yeah, right. If it put you at the closest point, you know, whatever point you intersect with the bosses with that target's hitbox, and you stop there, I, it would be great. It would be an almost infallible talent because yeah, even like Zenarth, for example, where everybody's gone flying off the edge. You know, the hitbox is well before that. She's got a pretty beefy hitbox. You know, so you'd see that a lot less and you'd be able to use it as a pseudo charge, not as a, okay, well, I'm going to do this and I have, to, it's just going to charge me anyway. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, and I will say just one final thing before we move on is overall, I'm a big fan of Skyreach, way bigger fan than I thought I would be. I really enjoy mm-hmm. it. Um, I will say for a lot of people who died to Skyreach, and I haven't seen this too much, but I have heard about it, is that you are probably dying to Skyreach and it being Skyreach's fault, certainly a lot less than you think, but I would actually argue that you're probably dying to other things more or just doing less damage, like whichever right. one you're choosing to focus on. Like your overall ability, your your capacity in your brain to handle the information in front of you, you are spending some of that capacity on a pull with frontals, I can actually only think of like three of them in Mythic Plus. I was thinking about it for like the last minute where I know for a fact that I'm less aware of my surroundings because I'm so focused on making sure that that button doesn't kill me. So it may not even be Tiger Palm killing you. It can be you dying to something else or playing worse because you're just so focused on that. And the ones I was thinking of is the big frontal pull in Court of Stars, the pull mm-hmm. before Hersia with all of those mobs in Halls of Valor. Oh, there, was, there was one more with just a ton of frontals that it was on top of my head where but like outside of those couple of pulls, I actually don't think it really takes away from your cognitive load at all. And it's kind of talked about like it always does. But there are just definitely a few pulls and a few dungeons that exist in this expansion where it is just very dangerous to have. And it makes you either not press Tiger Palm or makes you less aware of the game in general. Yeah, um, and those things, they, they just, those stick out. The times where it, where it works fine don't stick out. That's just noise. The times where you know, you go zipping off the edge or you go into a cleave, it's so visually noticeable that those things get stuck in your head. I mm-hmm. think that's a real psychological bias. Okay, so we have a bit more time and there's a couple more important things. So we kind of briefly touched on Serenity and I, I kind of gave my thoughts on it. You talked about the choice between these two. I, mm-hmm. I actually feel differently than you with Serenity, but I would probably defer to your opinion because you think about a lot this a lot more than me. I just think if you take away the damage that things are doing and you just play and you just, you had no damage meter and you just hit a boss or a target dummy for five minutes and you played one with storm earth and fire and one with serenity. I feel like storm earth and fire clears serenity. I I, I like gameplay wise. I, I don't even think it's close, at least for me. Like I just, I just feel like maybe the only thing that, that makes up for it is the opener or serenity or having lust or mm-hmm. tiger or both. But I just feel like Storm Earth and Fire is just it's just a better button. And I and I, I like them kind of making it the single target option. Uh, but I just wish maybe they would even go harder into it or maybe make the button even better. I mean, they certainly if it, if it is supposed to be the single target, uh, it's not quite that clear. Like if it's supposed mm-hmm. to be the single target option, I would rather it be more powerful uh, or at least be more gameplay altering or or maybe even specifically target the. Uh, one and a half minute and three minute uses of of the spell a lot more than like the opener. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Serenity is, is, again, it's kind of one of those things is, as with a lot of Wind Walkers, and I would imagine a lot of specs in general, that Serenity is good, but it could be better. If Serenity was Weapons of Order, I think it would be categorically better. You know, I, I think there's, if Serenity was a little bit of a long, I mean, there's so many things. If it was a little bit of a longer buff, so that it ate up more of that time and you weren't kind of in between Serenity as much. I've been a long time, you know, not a super big fan of Serenity, but I've I've enjoyed it, you know, right now in terms of the flow um, of it with, with that Fist of Fury canceling and Rising Sun kicks and Blackout kicks resetting and, and stuff like that. You know, so I, yeah, I, I think it's one of those things that if we saw Rising Sun kick buffed, Serenity would feel like it had more mm-hmm. of not only do I think Rising Sun Kick buffed, I actually I I kind of want to say uh like segue there. Let's just talk about kind of Rising Sun Kick in general. I'm concerned with Rising Sun Kick going forward, especially with the loss of our current tier bonus, 
and with the power level of glory of the dawn something that is excellent gameplay feel to have back where you get that refund sometimes but the damage behind this it literally makes no sense it's as if they're not Absolute aware duty. it's as if they're not aware of it at all if you did not have to path through this then you would never consider it and I just think in general that should be looked at the overall mm -hmm. spell of rising sun kick without the nerf and then or without the tier and i think the this talent should feel better than this like if you like this is in such an accessible position too if you're a windwalker on a fight that has an aoe job even well, let's just say broodkeeper um, you're on broodkeeper right now i think it's an excellent example of what the talent tree system should be in wow there are some classes like windwalkers currently moonkins uh havoc demon hunters uh, Shadow Priest, a few other classes that it's like you should really just have them hitting ads because they're so good at specifically that. But a few classes like Warriors, Arms Warrior, uh, a couple other specs can actually spec for AOE or single target and they're kind of, you can put them on the boss or on the ads and it's kind of cool. I would love Windwalkers to realistically on a boss fight be able to take two points of AOE out somewhere and really feel like they're gaining some single target by specking in to the talent that has an icon of your literal like most iconic single target ability and have it just be more impactful than this so that's that's a great and that's something that you know i thought about last night actually specifically we're going through some of the bosses looking at as we were doing farm looking at some of the talent choices that people had you know and a fight like sinarth you know for example where really you know, you're probably going to lean into getting fatal flying guillotine so you can get the touch of death off the big ad onto sinarth but really rising star there should be a great talent for that purpose um, because it's a, it's a single target situation. If I want more boss damage, rising star should do it. And as I looked at the things and I, ca you know, I whipped out, took out my calculator and, you know, did the math and stuff like that. It just was so spectacularly meh, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, and some of that goes back to glory of the dawn you know, being, being weak. I mean, I would love, and I've been advocating this for a long time. I'd love to see glory of the dawn, you know, have a lot more umph to it. We're going to take that talent pretty much all the time because it gives us access to hit combo and strike of the wind Lord. So maybe functionally it doesn't get buffed. That's not going to change how or when it's used, but you know, the chi reset is right now 99% of the power of that talent. Mm-hmm. Or not chi reset the chi refund. the chi refund yeah yeah so i'd like to see it more people love that double backflip you know i'd like to see that double backflip really mean something you know like it used to the original mm -hmm. tornado kicks you know as it was called um and then glory of the dawn those had umph those had strength to them when you did that second backflip you know you did you know a nice amount of more damage you know so i think that that could really benefit from being upped in some way, I would like to see it, you know, like Glory of the Dawn, have it based on crit chance instead of a flat 25%. You know, crit is strong for Windwalker. Let it be a, a crit chance. The more crit you get, the more damage it does. Or maybe the more crit, you know, sorry, the more crit you get, the more often it procs. Or maybe the more crit you get, the more damage it does, right? At 25% crit, it does 25% a damage of a rising sun kick. And just at 40% yeah. crit, it does 40, you know, and stuff like that. Because then that works with Zuen's battle gear and then you're gonna Correct. get that and you know and you get more interplay between these talents windwalker has a lot of that interplay and that was a huge improvement coming into this expansion but there could be more there'd be some really nice stuff and look at what it's um, competing against like this is mm -hmm. something that in most talent trees generally speaking you want there is some scenarios where pathing is a bigger consideration here but when you have talents next to each other you want them to roughly compete or be a similar power level per point and I actually think Windwalker in a lot of ways actually grasps this. Obviously, completely ignore mm -hmm. the very bottom row where Skyreach and Invokers right. are competing with the dog shit on the left and right of them. But like <laughs> right. Transfer the Power, Zwen's Battle Gear, Touch of Death, Bone Dust Brew, these are really powerful things. Uh, even Spinning Crane Kick, 10% per point. Zwen's Bond, Fury of Zwen, Empowered Tiger Lightning. These are all like, and then and then what is this, right? Even Even probably its direct counterpart. Spinning crane kick damage by 10%, which admittedly right now, because Zwen's bond isn't as taken, it is kind of a thing you are pathing to to get the touch right. of death talent anyway. But if that wasn't the case, this still has so much more power per point than this does. It just seems, it just seems yeah. off. Uh, but I, I do yeah, want, I, I do want to move off that a little. I'll give you like, like literally 30 seconds to uh, tie up rising sun kick. Yeah, no, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, you know, the fact that, crane vortex is 10 to 20 percent and there's still times where you don't take it just because zuen's bond is one point to get you to fatal flying guillotine as opposed to two you know rising star being at five and then ten percent is just 
you know, week. And, and that's where a lot of, I think PVP plays a lot of that, but they can be tuned separately and they have been tuned separately. And I think they should continue to be tuned separately, but rising sun kick is where Windwalker single target should live. Uh, I completely agree. I want to talk to you about a few pathing issues and a few really weirdly placed things on this tree that in my opinion, limit a lot of creativity. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of times, especially in raid fights, where, and again, monks, kind of their whole identity is, I'm the class that can have a button for this where conventionally your two-minute, three-minute cooldowns will not, and mm-hmm. will have some value there. Obviously, I, I, we've already talked about how Bone Dust kind of limits that because of the one-minute cooldown, but I think spiritual focus is something that we've never really had a chance to interact with because mm-hmm. it's just a button that in the past was just in the shadow of, at every single moment, Whirling Dragon Punch, but and oftentimes as well in the past Serenity. So it was something that you just did not choose. And it was just on that talent row and you never used it. Now it's something where it's like, okay, those weird lineups where my clones are a little bit off, man, I could get that extra usage here if I have this one point talent. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. But it being locked behind Meridian Strikes, which in its own merit is actually probably underrated as well, just because of how powerful Touch of Death is. You just kind of don't have enough points. Um, But it's like hidden behind that, the thought process to go through it doesn't really make sense. Um, Jade right. Ignition, and a lot of single target fights where you have somewhat of a cleave build, you still have Dance of Chiji. You would get value on Jade Ignition on single target, and obviously in AoE, but what is this doing here? Think about the the nodes that are supposed to have relative power to each other. I'll read them in order. Strike of the Wind Lords, Meridian Strikes, Storm Earth and Fire, Storm Earth and Fire and Serenity. We'll kind of ignore that because they do some really important buttons in the middle that make you want to path through them, etc. Shadow Boxing Treads, Inner Peace. What is this doing here, right? It's just right. in the middle of the tree. It limits your pathing options, and it completely makes it makes Jade Ignition basically irrelevant mm-hmm. because this exists. Um, and then may, also, I'll let you kind of talk about these a little bit. And I think spe- specifically pointing on, I just think Meridian Strike's position is just so weird, given that there's so many Touch of Death things on the other side. And then also something that, thank everything, that it is not meta right now in Rushing Jade Wind and also in this middle section. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I agree. I mean, I, I think Jade Ignition is absolutely worth one point. It is fabulous. And it's really a lot stronger than people give it credit for. It's just not worth two points, you know, is is the problem. Mm-hmm. When you already are kind of strapped for points, you know, elsewhere. Um, spiritual Focus is another one. You know, I think with Serenity, you know, talking about that kind of in-between time. Um, You know, spiritual focus would cut down on the amount of in-between time that you have between serenities, just like it would cut down on the amount of in-between time in Mm -hmm. Storm Earth and Fires. You know, I think Meridian Strikes is is one of those things that if you're if the reduced cooldown helps you, it is a spectacular talent. You know, if you're if you're pulling Mythic Plus, it can be I don't say it is, but it can be very worth one point. The problem is you look at some of the other stuff, wanting to grab Bone Dust Brew, Fatal Flying Guillotine. You don't, it's hard to find that one point. Mm-hmm. Inner Peace is just means nothing to Windwalker. Um, you know, Windwalker now is, you know, there are big chunks of time where you don't care about energy. You know, if you hit the energy cap, yeah, whatever. You know, I'm going through Serenity. I'm, I've am i got a bunch of resets back to back, you know, whatever. You're just not, you don't, it's not as important as it used to be. You know, when you're flowing and you're, and you're going through kind of the in-between times, yeah, you're paying attention to that energy. But at that point, that 10 energy is that, who cares? Having that 10 energy when you're hitting that cap is, is who cares? This uh, is something where I feel like inner peace, and there's actually not too many talents like this in the game, thankfully is something that is completely and totally irrelevant and almost seems like an afterthought that it's there and they ran out of time. Luckily, yep. Blizzard is actually, give them the most credit in the world, actually. They are doing way more talent tree and class changes than they've ever done in the last couple mm-hmm. of expansions. Like, even I would say people would probably have that opinion right now if just all we had was the 10.0.5 changes and not even the fact that they've already announced an entire other slew of them coming in 10.0.7. Right. They are doing a ton of work here. But I, I really hope they give some room for these talents to be just outright replaced for most classes going forward. Uh, this has no reason to be here. In fact, some of it can even be using tier bonuses as some kind of trial and error. Oh, this tier bonus really worked. It really affected the class in a good way. Okay, well, you know what? Next patch, we're removing inner peace. We're moving something down here to where inner peace is. And then now the current four piece and two piece, but like probably a diluted version of it 
is like somewhere down here, right? And that, that can be ways to allow this really cool borrowed power you're adding into the game in tier bonuses. Mm -hmm. I know that's a trigger word for people, but that is tier, tier sets are exactly that. And you can allow the really good ideas from that to actually continue in the game if they work. Right. I think any Moonkin would tell you that right now, that imagine playing that class right now without your tier bonus. It's a, it's a much, much worse spec. That's just something I really hope they look at. And then, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you kind of finish up that thought, especially if, hopefully you get to Rushing Jade win for sure full-time yeah so I, I agree i i think having you know this kind of continued iteration is really great i've spent a long time kind of shouting at the void you know at times when it comes to this stuff and i think it's clear right now that the void is listening or the void is not a void anymore and that's great you know and that's not something that i would change there is that kind of uh you know bias you know again of all right well they're getting these changes you know and i have these changes i think we should get you know why am i not getting it that's natural and that's and that's going to happen because i think you know that idea of using tier bonuses i think is great um and not one that i had really heard tossed around uh before you know the windwalker tier bonuses right now are strong the two piece is strong um in single target the three piece plus or the three piece the four piece and the two piece mm -hmm. is, is strong in aoe i think those are those are good things they they create more synergy between abilities um, you know, I think they fit the talent tree and they're not ones that really you're going to change things up for. Um, you know, there's really not a super big effect rotationally for the monk, uh, the, the Windwalker tier sets, um, but they're nice. They're nice to have. They provide that rising sun kick damage increase. We're talking about rising sun kick being kind of lackluster. Imagine if we didn't like you have that tier bonus for every rising sun kick you hit. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't, then I don't know what you did with Fist of Fury during that time. So you really, you're, you're given that that bonus, that extra single target damage that Windwalker needs through the tier set, but then you're seeing it is nowhere near enough. Mm -hmm. um, and when that tier set goes, it's going to have to be replaced with something even more. Um, you know, to briefly touch on Rushing Jade Wind, mm -hmm. you know, Rushing Jade Wind was, you know, it is an absolutely awful button to press. You know, its existence continues to confuse and surprise me um, after we have had in the past several really positive iterations of, of rushing Jade. Wind. You go way back to it being a generate, an AOE generate. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to the period of time where it was a on or off toggle, you know, like the old Fury of Air used to be for for Shaman, you know, stuff like that. And then we've been stuck with this useless and really disruptive, terrible button to press for an extended period of time. This is not hyperbole, um, chat. This is not no, emotional it's hyperbole. Awful. This is, it's one of the absolute worst buttons in the game, and it would be one of the biggest talking points if this was currently something that gave you the most damage. Thank God they nerfed the Resonant yeah. Fist interaction with this, because it is a six-second maintenance buff that costs your main resource and is reduced by haste. It's insanely yeah. bad to play. It's unbelievably yeah. bad to play. Yeah, it just it just is awful. There's no, it has no redeeming qualities. You know, there is not a positive that I can say about rushing Jade Wind other than the fact that it used to be good. Mm -hmm. You know that they were that at some point in the past it was you know a fun button to have access to, um, and now it is just unpleasant in every definition of the word. And then uh, for the last fifteen minutes, we've talked about most of the talents. We might get around to some of them. Obviously, we. Uh, we didn't really talk about Fury of Zwen. I actually wish this got played more. I love this. I love this ability. I, I think it's so cool. I wish uh, Zwen's yep. Bond got more play. I wish they identified that Last Emperor's Capacitor, albeit the exact same spell from Legion, uh, Crackling Jade Lightning, uh, current design at its base level does not really support this ever being usable. And there's like a couple other things that are like pretty cool about the class. I just want to say that while Windwalker is flawed, and I think a big point of uh, this is to hopefully give some really good feedback to, to Blizzard about how the overall community is feeling about a lot of this stuff. I want to say that I love playing Windwalker right now. And mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's despite all of this. Um, mm -hmm. It's a class that I've played for a really long time in general. I actually think even with all these issues, this is the singular most fun I've had playing this class, except for maybe in WAD. And that's mm -hmm. knowing that it could be so, so much better. Obviously, that starts with you know more of your damage being moved off of touch of death a lot of these talent tree things be just being a little bit more creative allowing you to get actual single target when you spend eight points to attempt to do that there's a lot of issues i think when walker is so so good I, I definitely agree i think for me 
you know, I, I still give that little bit of an edge to Tomb of Sargeras, Windwalker. Mm -hmm. uh, but a big Serenity, part of that yeah. is going to be is going to be my preference of single target damage. You know, Windwalker single target then wasn't bad. It wasn't spectacular, you know, particularly good, but it wasn't bad. And 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 I think the Serenity playstyle we have right now is close. It's almost right, you know, back into terms of feeling that flow. It just doesn't have the umph to it where you just kind of feel womp, womp, womp. Yeah, I mean, I think Mythic Plus, this is absolutely the most fun I have had in Mythic Plus. Um, I think things like Shadow Boxing Treads and um, Teaching of the Monastery putting out and really maintaining Mark of the Crane for you naturally is is a unspeakably enormous quality of life increase there there's a little bit of weirdness with what targets it hits it's generally proximity based it really i think is is in a really good place the talent or the the class talent tree for windwalker is a bit of a mess um you know to where we kind of have to bop around and spend a lot of points on the left side when even Mistweavers don't spend as mm -hmm. many points on the left side in a lot of situations as, mm -hmm. as Windwalker does and and stuff like that where Windwalker kind of becomes the aura bringers you know of bringing generous poor and close to heart um you know yeah. Windwalking existence and garbage tierness yeah. is is just you know what actually I I made the mistake at the beginning of this of zooming out so the windwalker tree could be more visible to people who are watching <laughs> and i literally forgot to talk about the class tree and this could probably be an entire other conversation but the class tree for windwalker is it just monk is deeply flawed it still has it's so really, many weird like, so weird Windwalking is just it doesn't make any sense why it's there and why it's two and four percent you know it could be i think it at seven and fifteen percent you would probably be like, all right, we could use this now. Yeah, but then, but you, we could like, use this now. But then, as the only monk in your group, you're spending six talent tree points on required raid buffs. Like, what is that? Yeah. Like that? Yes. It's just like, like, what is that? Why is roll behind soothing mist? Why do you have to get like five potentially irrelevant buttons to get Fort Brew based on like whatever you're doing? You have, you know, mm -hmm. strength of the spirit locked behind this. Your raid buffs are on opposite side of the tree. And then at the absolute worst thing, I obviously bounce back is flawed. Could probably spend a bit of time on that. But what is the bottom of this tree? I, I think the bottom of the Windwalker class tree might be, or the, the monk class tree, sorry, is one of the biggest failures they've done. Clearly the theme was totems. They created, in my opinion, this work in progress summon white tiger statue. Do you use it? Because it adds a little bit of damage. Most people do. I don't know a single person that likes this ability. And I also don't know... If you were tasked with creating, and this is the exact case, summon Jade Serpent statue and summon Black Ox statue um, <laughs> already existing and having to create a Windwalker damage-focused, probably Zwen-based statue, this mm -hmm. could not have possibly been more basic and boring than its implementation. Yep. Almost anything could have been better than this. This was yep. as if they gave it to a kindergarten class that was asked to... To, well, okay, that's probably just being like obviously I know nothing about game dev, so I don't want to be an asshole. But like, serious, seriously, this this is as as bad as I think this could have been. It definitely feels like a before thought that then became an afterthought. You know, like they started with saying, you know, oh let's like uh, let's add a statue. You know, Windwalker doesn't have a statue. Let's add a Windwalker focused statue. Great, great idea. And then it just kind of got forgotten. And then all, I mean, literally forgotten. It was a not yet implemented for months, yeah. work in progress for a long time. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, what we what do we do here? We want them to press it. All right. Really, you know, should, should give some kind of damage. All right. So we'll let it do this. And, you know, the first time that it popped up, you know, we assumed even that this 25% of your attack power was a placeholder. Because 25% of your attack power is less than a tiger paw. And yes, it's an AOE, but, you know, it's an AOE and, you know, these days AOE where AOE is not quite AOE anymore, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and it's on the global cooldown and it doesn't benefit or keep your mastery up. It's a blank global and it kind of, Windwalker had lost a lot of its blank global globals when they put Storm Earth, Storm Earth and Fire and Serenity off back off the global cooldown. Mm -hmm. You know, Zuen is still on the global cooldown and that was okay, but having Zuen and summon white tiger statue and bone dust brew potentially you know and storm earth and fire like it, it just it stacks on the things that windwalker did not need to be stacked on 
I didn't use it for a long time and I have kind of Me started too. using it more recently. Same. You know, I had to make a weak ore that glowed and, you know, for a while it made a noise and bounced around just so I would remember that it exists. Um, now I've settled on, on it just glowing, but it still is so low impact that even on Daffy ads, right, where it's going to be up the whole time while you're on that side and it should be pulsing a bunch of AOE damage. I look at it and it's like 3% of my damage. Like, all right, that's worth a global, but it doesn't feel like it should be. It doesn't feel worth a global. If it was a Windrush totem that worked basically like Windrush totem, it would be a more enjoyable button to press. Yeah, if, if it was, it I mean, right both now. of these other statues require interacting with them in some way, or they interact off of buttons you're pressing. Literally that at any level would be better, mm -hmm. right? Like even even some weird, like you folk, it's, it's, only, it's only up for like 10 seconds, but you focus your like, your attention on it and it's like an arcane crystal from like yes. back in the day or like or like you taunt it just like you taunt the black ox statue as it's about to expire and it like blows up or like just like i don't know just like there's literally there's like a million things to just make this not nothing but yeah uh we have yeah. we have seven minutes um a yeah, oh, aoe I, tiger's lust you tiger's lust at a tiger that would be I, super insane i mean my preference the the idea that i really liked um you know, the most was you would put it down and it would zap, like you would attack it and it would zap targets, you know, so you could be at range and it would, you know, electrocute, you know, a, it would a transfer your damage from hitting the, the statue to mm -hmm. something within 40 yards, allowing you to have yeah. some, so it would yeah. give like, it would give some of that split cleave back that Wind Walker lost when they changed Storm Earth and Fire, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a long time ago. I think we're pretty much good. Do you have any final closing thoughts? We have, you have six minutes until your raid. <laughs> um yeah i mean i think you know the biggest thing for me uh with it you know is that Woonwalker right now is a lot of fun to play you know if it wasn't fun to play i would have switched over to my feral druid um you know pretty quickly you know feral being in kind of a situation where it's a sustained aoe class is awkward from a historical standpoint um but it's fun you know but Woonwalker is a fun spec to play right now the problem is that i've gone back and forth about you know do i is it to the point where i should write an article about this is, it, is the article just going to be me whining you know for two thousand words mm -hmm. um and how do i keep my whining to only two thousand words it's it's tough it's wind walker i think is in a tough situation because if the goal for if blizzard's goal is that wind walker is this burst aoe class they have succeeded spectacularly Right. I mean, I think this is a point where the burst AOE, you know, there are very few times historically that a burst AOE class has been burstier than Windwalker is right now. Mm -hmm. um, even burst single target, you know, inside of that Serenity window, our burst single target is pretty good. Not even inside of Serenity window, just at any point where you were hitting a mob with clones, Bone Dust, Tiger, and right. the first five seconds of Skyreach with a full fists and... Like just every, just like a perfect Skyreach window. I mean, that's that's insane damage. Yeah. So I mean, I, it is, and I think it, the, it Windwalker feels good from a I'm pressing my buttons standpoint, but we're Windwalker. I feel still in single target, especially, and and this got a lot better in AOE. But a long a long time complaint for Windwalkers is that there it requires a lot more work to get the same uh, results that other specs do. Um, and I mm -hmm. think AOE is a lot easier with that, with, you know, things like shadow boxing treads and teaching the monastery, maintaining Mark of the Crane and Mark of the Crane being a little bit of a smaller chunk of your damage. Blackout kick staying relevant for a longer period of time. You know, all those changes, the positive bug fixes that Windwalker got over through Shadowlands and, and some of those positive changes, you know, so to the point that I feel that Windwalker AOE feels very rewarding. Touch of Death feels over rewarding for two oh, yeah. globals, and in single target, I think it it still requires a lot more work than a lot of specs, and maybe the value of that work has maybe never been lower. You know, and I I think a lot of this I think Touch of Death needs to be gotten heavily under controlled. You know, in whatever way, Fatal Flying Guillotine dropping a couple targets hit. All of there's a bunch of things that I could throw out to help make Touch of Death feel better. That delay needs to go. 
if it's if nothing else changes that delay needs to go Mm -hmm. you know but i think the power needs to be drawn away from touch of death and put back elsewhere and i think putting back a lot of that in single target you know is really nice because i think the single target kit the single target feel has maybe never felt better um you know and it's just kind of a shame that i think a lot of people don't get to experience it because there's not a lot of value in experiencing your value is not in that your value is elsewhere so i think windwalker continues to be kind of pigeonholed and i think it hides a lot of real value and positiveness um and good stuff you know that that lies in the spec that people are not going to get to see or experience because it is so you know dominated by touch of death Mm -hmm. right now um this Um, was this was a great talk i think you have to you have raid in one minute right yeah we're we're clear and trash to brew all right cool I will, I'll bring up one thing that I find super, super interesting before we leave, knowing that we won't have a lot of time to talk about it. What do you find interesting about this uh, talk with me and you, similar to the ones we've had for years? What is one notable omission that we did not talk about today and didn't feel compelled to? It's very obvious. Is it? Oh, yeah. And so it's obvious enough that I'm going to blank on it. Then. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have not <laughs> spoken about Dance of Chi-Gi for two hours of talking about Windwalker Monk. Um, this yeah. is something that has been so divisive for years, and I actually mm-hmm. can't think of exactly why this is the case, but I don't feel bad. I felt like Dance of chi was flawed in the past. However, I could not come up with a great solution on my own. I do not feel like Dance of chi is a problem this expansion, and I don't know why or what changed. I, I think what changed is its strength. You know, without crit, without calculated strikes to really put so much like that damage got taken out of spinning crane kick and put into touch of death. Um, I think if touch of death were to get nerfed, I think dance of Chi G becomes a little bit more of a problem, but I think it's, there's a lot of other mitigating factors, um, you know, that have kept it from being a problem. Um, yeah. And I think it's positive. Strength now. is not there for it to need be a problem. Like oh, in, yeah. in, the pa- in, in the past, it was like, it really sucks that you're just hoping for RNG to be just such an insane source of your damage. And while this spell still grants you a lot of damage, I had a broodkeeper, we killed broodkeeper yesterday. I had a pull going into the last phase where instead our kill pull, I had like 5.8 million spinning crane kick in P1. Mm-hmm. I had like 7 million and on a five minute shorter pull, like before mm-hmm. you even got into the last phase for those single target ones, it can still have an impact. It's yeah. just... I feel like it's more positive. When I end a pull now, I think the difference is I don't feel bad that I didn't get them like I did last expansion, but I feel great when I get more than a few and I'm like, wow, that was cool. I just, that, yep. that felt great, but I don't feel actively bad that I don't get them. And I, I feel like that that is that small change is so huge and is how I feel about this. In fact, I feel like if you were to just, for a lot of people who argued to remove this spell in the past, I think if you were to play... AOE right now without Dance of Chi-Gi would feel uh, significantly worse. I think it adds a mm-hmm. lot to the class. And specifically, if you are playing, if you're single targeting a boss in your AOE build, I think spitting crank kick procs on the boss, especially at the end of your bone dust window, feel insane. I think it's like yeah. so good for the class. Yeah, it's 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 definitely turned nice. And I think a big part of that is the tuning is a lot more under control. Yeah. All right. Uh, you have to go. I just want to say... I love having these conversations with you. Obviously, Windwalker, I think, is the class currently I'm the most passionate about, so I'm usually super more into these with you than I am with anyone else. But I also think that you are an excellent source of information for your class and spec. There is a lot of people who are not like that in the community, and I think you are the exact poster child for what a class leader should look like in this game. I have so much respect Thanks. for you and thank you for spending this time with me. Seriously, I think you're insane at what you do. Well, I appreciate you and you know and, and given the extra the extra volume to to a lot of this stuff and you know and your passion for the spec as well. So you know anytime anytime you got questions, you know, or just want to shoot the breeze about Windwalker. All right, thank you man. Good luck in your raid. I appreciate you. Yeah I gotta toss up my own stream and sweet killing Diurna. All right, cool. All right, see you man. I appreciate you. All right, bye-bye.